Hi there. Today we'll be walking through how to texture map your pattern on an object in perspective. We'll be using the classic Florence Knoll lounge chair designed in 1954. Selecting the right image to texture map your pattern onto is crucial. It's recommended that you seek out high resolution imagery. And it's also important that you find an image of an object that highlights your textile design, where the object is the focal point, not to be distracted by surrounding objects or the object being too small in the image. Select an object that doesn't have too many construction lines or anything that's rounded or biomorphic. Do not select an image where the color of the object is black or has a really dark value. It's nearly impossible to change the color from black to, say, a bright yellow. Mid-century furniture is excellent for texture mapping. It usually has clean lines and a lot of flat panels where your artwork can really become the focal point. Anytime you find an image online, it's crucial that you take it from 72 resolution to 300 resolution. You can do that by going to Image, Image Size, Resolution. Also, if the image was found online, it's important to change the image mode to RGB by going to Image Mode RGB. We're going to use a variety of tools to make selections around this object. The tools that we'll be using to make selections will include the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, the magnetic lasso tool, the magic wand tool, the quick selection tool, and the object selection tool. Each selection that we save in the image will be found under the channels window. The first step in preparing the image for texture mapping is to make a selection around the entire area you are altering with color or pattern overlays. I'm going to start by using the polygonal tool. This tool will allow me to make straight linear selections. Think of it as connect the dots. This will work nicely around the perimeter of the furniture base. To move around your image while you're zoomed in real close, hold the space bar, which allows you to pan through the image. I'm using the magic wand and holding the option key to deselect around the area of the chair separating the white background from the object. I'm going to save my selection by going to Select, Save Selection. Notice how my selection has been saved to the channels window. Areas that share this, a similar perspective, for example, the front of the sofa, I might put all these pieces on a similar channel and allow the shadows of the furniture, the construction lines, to visually split apart the pattern in that area. I will place these elements in the same selection. I'm going to use a subtractive process to carve into the original silhouette selection. This will allow me to produce really accurate selections that butt up exactly next to each other and fit together like a puzzle. If I deselect by hitting Command D and I want to pull up my selection that's been saved, I'll hold Command and click on the thumbnail located between where the eye icon is, and the name of the channel. I'm going to pull up my selection by holding Command and clicking on the thumbnail. I'm going to use the polygonal tool on this particular object because of its clean lines, which allows me to make fast selections. I'm going to separate this side panel from the rest of the furniture. I'm going to hold Option to carve into areas of the original selection.
I'm going to save the selection by going to Select, Save Selection. I'm going to deselect and pull up the original selection by holding Command and clicking on the thumbnail of the original silhouette. I'm going to deselect the side panel I just created by holding Command and Option. For this next channel, I will deselect everything but the very front of the chair, with the goal of placing the front of the armrest and front cushions on the same channel. I'm going to save this selection by going to Select, Save Selection. Once again, I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. I'm going to hold Command on the thumbnail of the silhouette. I'm going to hold Command Option to deselect the side panel in the front area. I'm going to deselect everything but the seating surface. And this time around, I'm going to use the magnetic lasso. I'm going to save the seating selection by going to Select, Save Selection. Once again, I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. I'm going to hold Command and click on the thumbnail of the silhouette. I'm then going to hold Command and Option and click on the left side panel, the front panel, and the seating surface. This time around, I'm going to deselect everything but the inside side panel. I'm going to save that by going to Select, Save Selection. I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D, holding Command and clicking on the silhouette. I'm going to hold Command and Option and click on the left side panel, the front panel, the seating surface, and the right panel interior. I'm going to deselect everything but the back cushion front. I'm going to save this selection by going to Select, Save Selection. I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. I'm going to hold Command and click on the silhouette. I'm going to hold Command and Option and click on the left side panel, the front panel, the seating surface, the right panel interior, and the back cushion front. I'm going to deselect everything but the top of the armrest. I'm going to go to Select, Save Selection. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. I'm going to hold Command over the Silhouette thumbnail. I'm going to hold Command and Option and deselect the left side panel, front panel, the seating surface, the right panel interior, the back cushion front, and the top armrest. And what I'm left with is the side of the back cushion, which I'm going to go to Select, Save Selection. Now I have all of my selections saved. Before I get too far down the path, I'm going to save this file as a PSD. This way, it'll save all of my alpha channels, which you can see is already checked. 
Before I apply my pattern onto the various surfaces of this chair, I'm going to desaturate the color that's in the upholstery, and I'm also going to enhance the levels, which will bring out lighter values in the image. I'll do that by holding Command and clicking on the silhouette. I'll go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate, and then I'll go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. This is where I can enhance the white areas inside this image. I want to reference back to the size dimensions of the Florence Knoll lounge chair. The width, depth, and height of each proportion is roughly about 32 inches. This is the size of the file that I'll create when I make the original for each perspective. The goal is to produce a pattern layer that's 32 by 32 inches. That pattern will then get shrunk down to accommodate the image of the chair. So first we're going to create a true scale image that's 32 by 32 inches, but we're going to scale it down to accommodate something that's roughly 3.5 by 3.5 inches. Then we'll distort the perspective to make sure it is in alignment with our image. The goal is not to compress the image as we texture map it onto the surface of this chair. The goal is to overlap those areas and use the selections as a means to trim down the overlap pattern so it is clipped exactly to the parameter of the image of the chair. I'm going to make a new file that's roughly 32 by 32 inches. I'm going to double check my artwork to make sure it's also 300 resolution. This artwork's roughly 14 by 17. We should see roughly three repeats of the artwork horizontally and two of the repeats vertically within a 32 inch square. I'm going to define my pattern by going to Edit Define Pattern. And then in my 32 by 32 inch space, I'm going to fill by going to Edit and fill your most recent pattern into that area. This is the proportion of the image that's going to go on the side of this chair. I'm going to change the scale of this image from 32 inches by 32 inches to roughly 4 inches by 4 inches. That way, when I drag it into my file, it's scaled appropriately. For the image of the chair. So just to recap, we've defined the original size of our pattern at true scale. We filled it into a space that is roughly the size of the object in real life, in this case a 32 inch by 32 inch square. Then we changed the scale of that larger proportion to accommodate the size of the object in this image. So we went from true scale to true scale of the furniture to the scale of the image. In this case, the image is roughly 4x4. Four four. We're going to be using multiple layers of the same image that we just created. We're going to use it on the side, the front, the seating surface, the back image, um, the armrest, the interior side panel. So we're going to need roughly about six or seven pieces of the same layer. I can make a duplicate of the layer by going to the fly bar on the side of the layers window and go to duplicate layer. I might do that for multiple layers just to speed up the process. So I have roughly eight layers of the same image, and I have roughly eight channels of the same saved selections. I'm going to turn off all layers but one, then we'll change the opacity so we can see through the image onto the object. The goal now is to change the proportions of this image to accommodate the furniture size. 
I'm going to change and distort this by going to Edit, Transform, Distort. I'm going to make sure that my image is slightly larger than what I need it for. That way when I use the selection to pull it up and trim it, it's exactly in location where it needs to be. I'm going to hit return on the transform function and beef the opacity back up to 100%. I'm going to pull up the left side panel as a selection by holding command and clicking on left side panel. If I were to hit delete now, it would remove the interior of that space. To change that, I'll go to Select and Inverse. The hotkey for that is Command-Shift-I. I'm going to turn off that particular layer at the moment, and then transform the other layers that I have of the same image. I'm going to change the opacity so I can see through it, and then I'll go to Edit, or Command T, Transform and Distort. I'm going to hit Return. I'm going to beat the opacity back up to 100%, and then I'll pull up the front panel by holding Command and clicking on Front Panel Channel. Then I'll go to Select and Inverse. Command, Shift, and I, and then hit Delete. In some cases, I might use the same layer a second time by duplicating it. I'll go to the fly bar and duplicate the layer. I might be able to use that layer to move it over and use on the side panel. To transform this, I'll hit Command T on the keyboard to transform it, and then I'll right click it. To distort the image. I'm going to hit return, take the opacity back up, and then I'm going to turn on the right interior panel by hitting holding Command in right interior panel. Then I'll go to select, inverse the selection, command shift I, and then hit delete. I'm going to turn off those three layers for the moment and turn on the fourth one. This one I'll change the opacity down to about 50 percent. I'm going to hit command T to transform it and then I'll right click on it to distort the form. I'm going to hit return, change the opacity back up to 100%. I'm going to pull up the channel that I've saved of the top cushion or the seating surface by holding command and clicking on that channel. Then I'll go to select inverse, command shift I, and then hit delete. I'll turn those four layers off, hit deselect, and then the fifth layer I'll utilize on this back cushion. Change the opacity to 50%, hit Command T to transform, I'll right click to distort. I'll hit return, change the opacity back up to 
I'll pull up that back cushion channel by holding Command and clicking on the thumbnail. Then I'll inverse it by going to Select, Inverse, Delete. For the sixth surface, I'll change the opacity down to 50%. I'll transform by hitting Command T. Then I'll right click on top of the form to distort it. And this time around, I'll work on transforming the top surface of this piece of furniture. I'm going to hit return, change the opacity to 100%. Then I'm going to go to the top armrest channel by holding command and clicking on the thumbnail. Then I'm going to inverse the selection by going to command, shift, and I, and then hitting delete. I'm going to turn off those channels, and I'm going to replicate the side panel a second time. I'm going to click on that layer, go to the fly bar, and duplicate the layer. I've made my duplicate. I'm going to change the opacity to 50%. I'm going to hit Command T to transform it. And this time around, I'm just going to position it as if it's leaning back in the chair, much like the cushion. And then I'm going to hit Return. This time around, I'm going to pull up the side of the back cushion by holding Command, clicking on that channel, and then I'm going to inverse the selection by going to Select Inverse, and then I'll hit Delete. I'm going to make that layer 100% and make all of them active. I'm going to delete the layers that I didn't, do not need for this particular project. Just throw them in the trash. Each one of these layers at 100% I'm going to change the layer mode from normal to multiply. If I want to modify the shadows underneath the image, I'm going to make sure I'm on my background layer in the layers window. Then I'll pull up the silhouette of that selection by holding command and clicking on the silhouette. And then I could adjust the color or levels underneath the image to either darken or lighten the shadows in the image.